Hey guys, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Question number 10, uh, chapter 24, electric potential. Uh, we are solving Halliday Resnick Walker, 10th edition, international edition. I'll read out the question. In figure A, what is the. This is the diagram. In figure A, what is the potential at point P due to charge Q at a distance R from P? Set V equal to 0 at infinity, meaning infinity is our reference point. Part B. In figure B, the same charge Q has been spread uniformly over a circular arc of radius R and central angle 40 degrees. What is the potential at point P, the center of curvature of the arc? In figure C, the same charge Q has been spread uniformly over a circle of radius R. What is the potential at point P? Uh, at the center of the circle. Then part D, rank the three situations according to the magnitude of the electric field that is set up at P greatest first. Okay. So uh, we are given three situations. In all the three situations, charge is Q. In the first case, charge Q is a point charge. In the second case, charge Q is distributed over an arc with angle here equal to 40 degrees. In the third case, same charge Q is distributed or, uh, uh, or the circumference of this uh, circle, circular ring. We have find our potential at P in the three cases. And then in the later part, we have to rank the situations according to the magnitude of the electric field at these points. Okay. Uh, a simple point uh, regarding electric potential due to some charge distribution. We know due to a point charge Q, potential is, potential V is gamma Q divided by R. Gamma Q divided by R. Gamma being the electrostatic constant, you can write 1 by 4 by epsilon 0 for this, whatever. Now, uh, remember that potential is a scalar quantity, it is not a vector quantity, okay? So, potential being scalar quantity, when we find potential due to a distribution of charge, we have to simply add potentials due to individual parts of the system, not the vectorial addition, as was the case with electric field. So if we have a charge Q1 here, we have a charge Q2 here, we have a charge Q3 here, and we have to find our potential at this point P, it is simply potential, total potential is gamma Q1 divided by R1. gamma q1 divided by r1 plus gamma q2 divided by r2 plus gamma q3 divided by r3 okay so simple addition uh, algebraic addition of the if some charge is negative we'll take the minus sign if uh, charge is positive we'll take the positive sign now uh, the special case we'll be dealing uh, with in this uh, question is if the charges are at the same distance common distance from point p Okay, if all the charges, or in case of a continuous charge distribution, if all the charge elements, suppose you have an arc which is charged, and all, in this case, we'll consider all the charge elements. This is a charge element, then this is a charge element, then this is a charge element, then this is a charge element. So in this case, if all the charges are equidistant from the point where we have to find our potential, or in this case, where, uh, if all the charge elements are at the same distance from the point where we have to find out uh, potential. Then in that case, R1, R2, R3, they are all same. So we can write gamma times Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 divided by R. So it's simply gamma times total charge. This is total charge of the system divided by common distance of the point from the from different elements or different charges of the system. So gamma times total charge divided by common distance. Okay, Gamma times total charge divided by common distance. Now, now in this case, in the first case, we have simply a point charge. Okay, we have simply a point charge. So potential will be simply V is equal to gamma Q divided by distance is capital R. Gamma Q divided by R. In the second case, well, this is an arc. Now note here, this is an arc, and point P, the point of concern where we have to, where we have to find our potential, is the center of curvature of the arc. That means every point on this uh, on this arc is at the same distance R from point P. 
Okay, is that the same distance? So all the charge elements, you consider this charge element, you consider this charge element, you consider this charge element, all the charge elements are at the same distance from point P. So we'll use this thing, gamma times total charge divided by common distance. So in the second case, in the second case, potential is gamma times total charge is again capital Q divided by common distance is radius of curvature of the arc, which is again capital R, same thing, capital R. So you can see potential is same, potential is same. In the third case, is exactly the same thing. We have charge distributed on the circumference of the circle and point P, the point of concern where we have to find out uh, potential is the center of curvature of this circle. So every point on the circumference or every charge element on this uh, ring is at the same distance r from the center. So common distance again. So potential will be again the same thing. V will be equal to gamma times total charge divided by common distance which is again radius of the circle r. So capital R is same in all the three cases, charge Q is same in all the three cases, so potential is same in all the three cases. Potential comes out to be same only when potential is a scalar quantity. This won't happen with the electric field because the electric field is a vector quantity and we have to consider vector addition there. Okay, we have to consider directions of uh, electric, electric field due to different elements. So uh, it won't be the case with electric field. Electric field won't be same at all these uh, in all these cases, but electric potential is same in all these cases because electric potential is a scalar quantity. <clears throat> now in part D, uh, we have to rank these same three situations according to the magnitude of the electric field uh, that is set up at point P greatest first. Well, in the first case, in the first case, electric field is simply gamma Q divided by R squared. Electric field due to a point charge. Okay, electric field due to a point charge. Gamma Q divided by R squared. In the third case, in uh, situation C, if we consider situation C, charge is uniformly distributed on this uh, circumference of the circle. If I consider a charge element here, Let's consider charge element 1. Electric field due to this charge element will be this way. DE1, I'll call this. Okay, DE1. Then electric field due to the diametrically opposite element. This one here. I'll call this element 2. Diametrically opposite element will be, this is positive, so field will be away from the element this way. I'll call this DE2, DE2. So electric field due to element one is DE1, which is downward in this case. And electric field due to its diametrically opposite element is DE2, which is upward in this case. We are considering identical charge elements, differential charge elements, so charge is same here, DQ, DQ. Both elements are at the same distance from the element R and R. So magnitude of the electric fields will be same. But directions are opposite. See, we are dealing with vector here. We are not dealing with scale. We are dealing with a vector quantity here. So we have to consider directions. Magnitudes are same, but directions are opposite. So they will balance out. They will cancel out. So together, these two elements will not contribute anything to the electric field at this point. Together, these two elements. Same will be the case with all diametrically opposite elements. You consider this element and then diametrically opposite element here. Fields will cancel out. You consider this element here, then diametrically opposite element here. Fields will cancel out. You consider this element here, then diametrically opposite element here. Uh, fields will cancel out. So field due to every element will be cancelled out by field due to its diametrically opposite element. What are we left with? Nothing. So electric field electric field will be zero in this case. Electric field is zero in this case. So we have field gamma Q divided by R. So nothing cancels out here because this is a simply point charge. Then everything cancels out here. So we have electric field is zero. Then we're left with this arc. Okay, we're left with this arc. Now the behavior of arc will be in between the two. 
in between the two. Everything will not cancel out, but everything will not be there. Something will cancel out, something will remain there. So that's what we'll see here. So if we consider an arc this way, and point P is here, If I consider a charge element here at this point, charge element EQ, field due to this charge element will be radially outward this way. Let's call it DE1. Due to a symmetric element on this side, okay, due to a symmetric element on this side, field will be this way. I'll call this DE2. Okay, DE2. Now you can clearly see the two fields due to these two elements, due to the symmetric elements, they are not in the same direction, so they won't exactly add up. They are not in opposite direction, so they won't exactly cancel out, so they are in between. So part of them will cancel out and part of them will add up. So let's see. We'll have vertical component of DE2 this way. DE2, I'll call this Y component. And we'll have vertical component of DE1 this way. DE1, I'll call this Y component. These two will cancel out. Okay, the charges are same. We have considered same identical charge elements, DQ, DQ. Distances are same, radius of curvature, radius of curvature. So magnitudes will be same. Magnitudes are same. These angles are same because we are considering uh, symmetric elements. So everything is same. So components will also be same. But these two components are in opposite direction. So they'll cancel out. Okay. They'll cancel out. Then, uh -oh. then what about the X component? What about the X component? X component of DE2 will be this way and X component of DE1 will be this way. Now they are in the same direction, so they'll add up. So one component adds up and one component cancels out. Everything contributes to the total field. Everything gets cancelled out. Part of it gets cancelled out, part of it remains there. So field, field magnitude in this case will be clearly less than this, but obviously greater than this. So if we rank them, field in A will be greater than field in B will be greater than field in C. Now this is the qualitative analysis. If you want to quantify things here, we have solved it in chapter 22. Chapter 22, problem, problem number 25. Chapter 22, problem number 25. So you can uh, go through, I'll put the link in the description. Field due to an arc, due to such an arc, field magnitude due to such an arc is given by E is equal to twice <coughs> gamma Q divided, remember gamma is the electrostatic constant, R squared into theta into sine of theta by 2. Theta is the angle, this, this total angle, total angle of the arc, total angle of the arc. And this theta must be in radians, okay, this theta must be in radians. If we substitute it here, remember we know theta is equal 40 degrees, so you'll first have to convert that into radians. If you substitute things here, this field comes out to be 0 0.98 gamma Q divided by R squared. 0 0.98, so it's obviously less than gamma Q divided by R squared. So it's less than the first case, which is 1 times gamma Q divided by R squared. So field of this one is... 0 0.98 gamma Q divided by R squared and here field is 0. So obviously field in case of A is greater than magnitude of the field in case of A is greater than that in B and is greater than that in C with C field is equal to 0. So we can write A greater than B greater than C with C equal to 0 with c equal to 0. So potential is same in all the three cases because potential is a scalar quantity. So we have to simply add them, add potential due to different parts of the system, algebraic addition. But field is a vector quantity, you have to consider the directions. So potential same in all the three cases, but field magnitudes are different in these three cases. Is it fine? That will do for this session.